in the long view of the history of mankind, four essential functions of mythology can be discerned. The first and most distinctive vitalizing all is that of eliciting and supporting a sense of awe before the mystery of being. After all, we don't know why and how the universe started. Of course, we have some scientific notions about all this, but science deals with only what we would call physical cosmology. The word cosmology in science refers only to physical cosmology, not to spiritual cosmology. It needs to be very clear about this. The second function of mythology is to render a cosmology, an image of the universe that will support and be supported by this sense of awe before the mystery of the presence and the presence of a mystery. A third function of mythology is to support the current social order to integrate the individual organically with his group. The fourth function of mythology is to initiate the individual into the order of realities of his own psyche guiding him towards his own spiritual enrichment and realization. So you see a very different perspective on mythology rather than just simply calling it fiction. In a later work, Campbell explains the relationship of myth to civilization. The rise and fall of civilization is the long, broad course of history can be seen largely to be a function of the integrity and cogency of their supporting canons of myth. For not authority, but aspiration is the motivator, builder and transformer of trans civilization. A mythological canon is an organization of symbols, ineffable in import, by which the energies of aspiration are evoked and gathered toward a focus. Rudolf Steiner, after all, not a negligible person in the whole history of religion. According to him, the mythological tales are not just stories, but actually the last remnants present in the current age of events that occurred long ago at an earlier stage of human consciousness. For example, if you read the Rig Veda or read the uh, Secret Doctrine by Madame, Ospe uh, Madame Blavatsky, they speak about previous many, many thousands of years before our contemporary science would say the universe began. What are they talking about, about human beings, etc.? So there is a very different kind of attitude to these things. So uh, please let me read this again. At that time, the human experience had a different balance of waking, dreaming, and sleeping than it does today. And people possessed more of what today would be called a clairvoyant consciousness that enabled them to have a direct perception of those events when they occurred. Clearly, this doesn't apply to absolutely every ordinary person in antiquity, but we have had very great sages who seem to have had a remarkable knowledge of even the external physical cosmos earlier. I think some of you have heard me mention this, a tribe in Mali, which is now of course regarded as a very primitive tribe, centuries ago were basing most of their practices on the star Sirius, which our contemporary cosmology did not even discover until hardly two or three decades ago. So how the hell do they know this? So to imagine <laughs> that everything in the past was just dismissible, they had no understanding of the universe or anything, is really is a particular perspective which needs to be questioned. 